my biggest thing is like, how do we advance it yet keep people safe and offer like effective treatments, you know, because there's, there's a lot of room for just sort of voodoo and people being taken advantage of and that sort of bothers me, you know? Oh, definitely, definitely. That's one of my frustrations. I think now with with social media, sometimes <laughs> the doctors who are not really the best doctors end up, you know, being the most popular doctors, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then people start doing things that they'd recommend and it may not be like the, the safest or the best for the patients. But then there's that marketing power that you can't ignore. And that happened a lot, like you said, throughout my 20-year experience, um, technologies where it's like, oh, my God, I know it's, it's fake. I know it's just marketing hype. We have, you know, you, you, you hear patients go through it. And then, then I see them telling me, oh, it didn't work. And I'm like, yeah, well, because it yeah. was, was not going to work. So, so I mean, the advice to the people is really also, you know, just be careful and don't believe everything that you see. Yes. Um, and do your do your research. And if it does sound too good to be true, sometimes it is. And you know, people, I think you're you're a surgeon. People yeah. really want to avoid having surgery, and sometimes in that effort of trying to not have surgery, sometimes they end up wasting money yeah. and wasting time on um, non-surgical procedures that really are not going to work. Right, right. Yeah, no, for sure. And I find that with hair quite a bit, especially with women's hair, actually, because there are plenty of people who could benefit from a hair transplant. Obviously not, you know, all women or all men, but there are lots of people who would, and it's much more cost effective than continuing to do PRP forever or, you know, just sitting on some supplements that have limited efficacy. So th those are all well and good. And sometimes it's, it's a good, you know, uh, kind of uh, added bonus. But um, there are, you know, times when you just have to not have to, but you can pull the trigger on a transplant and give someone a much more, you know, excellent result that's going to be with them for a long, long time and a result that they can't otherwise get with any other method. So, so yeah, sometimes I find people who come to me for like non-surgical, just mm -hmm. hair restoration. I'll end up trying to talk them into surgery, not because I'm trying to sell them on surgery, but because I really think that that's what they need. And then I have, uh, you know, my other kind of category, especially younger men, where they're not good surgical candidates. I mean, they just, you don't know what their pattern will be. You know, they just, they're kind of, thinning but not necessarily receding yet and some actually women too where it's just kind of a global thinning mm -hmm. and they want to transplant and i try to explain it to them that I, I can't just add hair diffusely everywhere and have it be a good outcome and that they're likely going to be thinning in the back or the donor areas so so yeah it's just i think it's about just educating and, and yeah. trying to do the right thing like you know sometimes people really want one thing and, they, and they're fixated on it and my my favorite types of consultations are when people like when I see it on my schedule and it's like, this person wants to talk about says. like aging yeah. and I'm like, oh, this is cool. You know, yes. um, or like their hair. Like I actually prefer those over like, like this person wants this specific surgery and, and you know, that's what they think they need. And because sometimes I end up talking them out of it.